more on this. We're joined in the studio now by the author of Israeli Apartheid, Ben White. Good to have you with us. Um, do you think that today enough people know about the Balfour Declaration and what the events were that it triggered? I don't think enough people know about the Balfour Declaration. And actually, I think people who do know about the Balfour Declaration uh, may not know all the important angles. I mean, the significance of the centenary um, partly lies in the opportunity to re-examine uh, a chapter in the so-called Israeli-Palestinian conflict uh, that often goes unexamined, at least in detail. The role of the British Empire, for example, in uh, supporting and nurturing uh, the Zionist movement uh, and the latter's uh, uh, aspiration to create a Jewish state and the way in which uh, that had a, uh, in the way in which that was a form of settler colonialism with respect to um, the Palestinians who were already in Palestine. But it, I mean, it's fair to say that uh, there were humanitarian and strategic reasons for uh, supporting a Jewish homeland at the time. I mean, the, the, the Israelis were refugees, they suffered atrocities, and, and the Britain did want a sphere of influence in the Middle East at that time. Yeah, I mean, Britain certainly had material political interests with respect to uh, the empire. Uh, and as you, as you say, there were people who supported the creation of a Jewish state in Palestine for humanitarian reasons. Although the Balfour Declaration didn't say state, did it? It said It, it didn't say state, it did say home. Um, on the other hand, it did also express support for uh, the Zionist movement's aspirations. And of course, although for, for sort of strategic reasons, the Zionist movement did not always explicitly say that it was looking for a state. Um, that, was, that was the end goal, certainly, of Theodore Herzl uh, uh, and others. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, any case that could be based on humanitarian need and so forth uh, cannot trump, couldn't and doesn't today, uh, trump the rights of the Palestinian people to self-determination uh, and uh, the ability to live in their own homes. It's not surprising that uh, you know, large numbers of, of Arab Palestinians feel that they were betrayed by the, the British government at that time. Um, do you think the British government should uh, acknowledge uh, the impact that that had on the Palestinians? And, and go, let's go further. Should Britain be doing more mm. to try and, and reach some kind of resolution in the uh, Arab-Israeli situation? Well, look, I, th I think there's been some kind of tension in the British government's response to the centenary. Uh, on the one hand, there has been uh, a, a pride, in their words, in terms of, ha of the declaration having been issued uh, and an expression of support for the State of Israel. But that expression of pride has often gone alongside an acknowledgement, uh, a, a limited acknowledgement, but an acknowledgement nonetheless that uh, Palestinian rights uh, have not been realized. Now, I think going forward, uh, while demands for an apology or a recognition of a Palestinian state uh, are ones that we've been hearing this week, I think it, uh, something that would really make a big difference going forward uh, would be accountability. Uh, because Britain still considers, and we've seen this in remarks that Boris Johnson made in Parliament this week, Britain still considers private criticism and so-called constructive engagement to be the way to make a difference with respect to Israeli violations of international law. And the record, unfortunately, shows that that just doesn't work. Uh, you talk about accountability. Um, recent prime ministers, including David Cameron and Tony Blair, have um, talked in a vague way mm. about British culpability. But certainly this idea of accountability or even an apology, uh, had, that has not been on the table at all. No. And I mean, for, for Palestinians, I mean, their lived daily reality today in Palestine or as, as refugees who can't go home uh, is, is a brutal one. Uh, and of course, they would like an apology for, for what Britain did and Britain's role and responsibility uh, uh, in, in the establishment of the Jewish state in Palestine. But I think more than that, Palestinians would like Britain to end its complicity now in what is happening. Uh, and that, that could happen in a number of different ways. There's a number of different uh, tools and measures at Britain's disposal, as there are at the disposal of European states and others, uh, to apply meaningful pressure on Israel to end these violations. I mean, it's quite clear that the situation that exists today is not the one that Britain would have said that it wanted to end up with. So should Britain be taking a, a, a much more um, aggressive line against things like the continued settlement illegal settlement building in uh, Palestinian land? Sure. I think there's two different things there. I think we have to be realistic about what Britain was knowingly doing when it issued the Balfour Declaration with its policies during the, the mandate, the occupation of Palestine for some 30 years. Um, the fact is today, Theresa May and the British government, uh, as all the British governments before it have done, it defines itself or thinks of itself as a proud ally of Israel, despite knowing what Israel has done, what it continues to do. So I think, I think we need to sort of 
accept that fact. Now, there is, of course, unhappiness from the British government now about things like Israeli settlements in the West Bank. And there is a, on paper, support for a Palestinian state in the occupied territories. But what we haven't seen yet, and this again, of course, isn't exclusive to Britain, but what we haven't seen yet is something that the Balfour Declaration represented and, that what, and it's carried through to today. And it's an approach that subordinates Palestinian rights to demands, not rights, of the Zionist movement and now the State of Israel. Uh, and un until that ends, then unfortunately there's not going to be a situation there which Britain may or may not have wanted, but certainly many people of goodwill want now, which is a situation of equality. Yeah, complex situation. Ben, thank you very much indeed for speaking with us. Ben White there.